scripting languages like PowerShell are a tool for automation. And the concept behind automation is doing something that you do over and over again and making it so that it's automated. Uh, functions are a key part to that. If you start doing something over and over again, you write the same code, it might make sense to put it into a function and use that. We're going to discuss using functions in this uh, video and my tools will be Visual Studio Code inside of a Linux environment. Yes, this is repetitive, I say this all the time, I'm doing this in Linux to show that while PowerShell is renowned for a system administration tool on Windows, it is open source in Linux and Mac, and you can use it just as much, you can use it natively inside your uh, most Linux and Mac flavors. I'm going to show it, so hopefully it increases your knowledge of how to use PowerShell everywhere. Let's discuss using functions. Basic principle behind a function, if you're gonna execute code more than once, use a function. It's reusable code. That's really the principle is reusable code. Um, yeah. So here is a function in a nutshell. Basic principle, you s declare the word function, you give it a name. Best practice is to follow the command lit concept verb noun. Um, it's highly recommended. You don't have to follow that. Then you just put in parentheses your variables that you want to pass in. You don't have to have variables. They're not required. But if you're going to put, if you need, if you want to be able to pass in content, uh, variable content, uh, content to your function, that's where you'll put it. Then you put your squiggly brackets. You'll do your code, and then you end your squiggly brackets. So let's go put this in Visual Studio Code and walk through the elements. So the first thing we did, I'm going to put, I'm going to take the variables out. We can see that this still is fine. The reason we get a nice little squiggly here, it's going to tell you that it's using an unapproved verb. Display is not one of the 27 verbs that PowerShell uses. It's okay. You don't have to. Um, if you start, if you start making a lot of code and you, lots of functions, you start passing around. It might help to make your commandlets follow. Basically, you're going to find that this function becomes just like a commandlet, and so it helps to follow the same naming schemes that PowerShell uses. But it's not. It's not essential. Um, and then everything that you're going to do goes between these two squiggly brackets, and then the syntax to call it. You put your functions up at the top. Usually, as a general rule, your functions go at the very top of your uh, PowerShell. It's you can put them at the bottom, but it's really usually general practice is they all go up at the top. And if you have multiple functions, you'll just write them. I could. I'm just going to copy this function, but um, and I would have say display text one and I could just keep on passing on functions down the line and then ultimately what I want PowerShell to do I write down below it and the way you call a function you just call its name so I've got this thing's called display text I just call display text I could if I want to call the next one I use text one and that'll call this function all right so we need to make sure that we put back in here we call our variables. We know that we want to pass in two little things. We want to pass in two strings. So I'm going to type in parentheses, variable one, variable two. Horrible, horrible parameter names. You should probably give a lot better definite uh, description to them. But for the principle of what we're doing here, we're going to leave that alone. And we'll, we'll copy this again. We're actually, let's just get rid of this function. No need to have it. And so now what we're going to do, variable one and variable two can be used in the function. And we're going to, so what we're going to do, we'll call display text and we'll pass in hello and readers. But remember, this is much like a, a commandlet. So if I have this written right, I can actually go tack. And notice it notice, knows there's a variable one. And I'll put a tack over here. And it knows there's a variable and variable two. So I, it's, I can pass it in that way. Um, it's not required that I put that in there, but for this, it makes it makes a little more clear that the relationship between it and commandlets. And if I run this, 
I now get back hello and readers. This hello goes here, this readers goes to variable two. That is a function in its most basic format. Um, you could, you don't have to have it write host, you could have it do some math in there, change some things around, et cetera, et cetera. So now let's talk about these parameters. You can choose to make the parameters mandatory or not mandatory. And the principle there is you've got your, we're going to pass in underneath the display text, we're going to put in our parameters. So this is a slightly different way of putting your parameters in. And I'm going to, we can, we'll make this go away for now. Just show this. Instead of putting this little parenthesis, this little uh, uh, parenthesis up here and saying variable one, variable two, this is not a very, this is definitely not best practice. You want to have a little more control over your parameters. So what you'll want to do is actually inside your squiggly brackets, we're going to declare this little thing called param. And then we call out parameter in square brackets. And then we put in parentheses mandatory equals true or mandatory equals false. I'm going to create a brand new variable so you can see this in practice. If you have more than one, they need to be separated by a comma. The very last one does not have a comma. So I'm going to put a comma here and I'm going to put, make my own parameter. So we put brackets, parameter, and then I put a parentheses and I'm going to say mandatory equals false. This is not mandatory and we're going to call it my variable. And that's as simple as it is. And we're going to write, put something here, write host third variable Okay, and we'll get rid of this display text here. We're going to get rid of this function. We don't need that anymore. We have a brand new function where we're actually putting stuff in. Let's take this out. So the first time I'm going to go put in all of my, my values. So I went display text and I put in the computer name with attack. I could put a tag here and say message, well, that went my variable, unfortunately, tab, message, there we go, and then tag my variable, and we could pass in that way. Let's go watch it work. And third variable, so first variable, my computer name, my message, hello world. I'm now going to, I said this is not required, so I'm going to erase it. I said mandatory equals false. Clear this up. Run the, run the command. Third, it's, it's still going to try to run this line, but now my variable is a blank. And so it just writes third variable and nothing in there. But it does not err. So it will handle this just fine. Now, if we take out my message, it's also not required. It's not mandatory. Clear this out. Run the command. And we notice now we're missing another variable, but it's still fine. This computer name, I'm going to just take it on out. I'm just going to write the command display text. Hit clear. If I run this, it's going to come back and tell me, uh, nope, you need to supply a computer name field. And if I press enter, it's still going to, it's, it's going to take that and press, push it in as a blank field because I pressed enter. Um, if I run it again and I leave it blank, I'm going to put some computer in there and it's going to pass that in. And so when you make them mandatory, it will then prompt you if you don't, if the person doesn't supply the, the field. And so that's a really nice feature there. Um, I want to show one more. We're going to do a new function, new, fi uh, new text file. I'm going to do a PowerShell, select a language. I'm going to do PowerShell. And we're going to do a function. I'm going to call it add 
two numbers. And we're going to put brackets. Now we're going to put a parenthesis param. And so we follow that syntax. We got param there. Param is not my bad. Param. And then we put blocks like that. If we follow the syntax, then we're going to write our parameter name right there. Parameter. I'm going to call it um, it's mandatory equals true. And we've now done that. We've finished our blocks, and now we call we give the variable. I'm going to put first number. I'm going to do a comma because I'm going to do it again. Parameter Tory equals false. And we're going to do second number. And if we look, what did we miss? I forgot a bracket. Bracket. My bad. See, as a general rule, I, once I do it once, I just copy and paste. Saves me some time. So parameter goes in brackets. And the mandatory field goes in parentheses. And actually, I want these both to be true. And now I'm going to write down here, write host parameter first number plus second number. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do a simple little math program. It's going to take two values, and they're going to add them together. So let's try that. Add to number. First number is going to be 1. Second number is going to be 2. And let's write that. Um, well, we'll just, we're, this is actually going to have an unintentional bug. And I just want to show this to you. This is not going to do what we expect it to do. Let's see what actually happens. If I hit clear, I'm going to run, run it. And what did it end up writing? 1 plus 2. But, but it, it was supposed to do math on that. All it did is write those things in there. And what happened is PowerShell is going to try to guess. It Variables are not by default written in there. It tries to best determination what type of variable it is. And it decided that these were strings. Now, unfortunately, when you add strings together, this is what you get. So what we want to do is we can add one more thing and typecast. I'm going to cast it as an integer and say you are, I'm going to force this and say by putting this bracket in, bracket in, these are integers. They are not strings. And now if I clear and I run the same, I don't have to run it. I can just run the command here. we will get actually let's try this okay so that actually my bad we're gonna do this here um, we're gonna do one first number plus number we don't want to write host. Write host is going to definitely put that as a string no matter what I do. And so if we run this, we now get three. If I remove the int, and now these will, it'll decide, try to do its best, and it's going to interpret it as a string instead of a variable, we're going to find sometimes you get some, um, we got a three here as well. It's, just need to be careful though. Depends on how they write them in. What if I go, 
And so basic principle, you don't want to leave when you're passing things in up to the computer to decide what to do. Um, my recommendation is to always typecast, especially when you got numbers, so that you make sure they come in correctly. You don't want it to accidentally think it was a string and do something weird with it. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the general principle behind a function. You use the param. You can then type in your parameters with brackets and parentheses mandatory is true or false. Uh, nice thing is here, if I make this false, and I do false again, we'll just reemphasize this. If I run this command, clear this out, Let's go put the typecasting in there. Int typecasting. Int run this. And now I'm going to remove that. Just run it. It's going to tell me that I don't need those. Didn't do me very good. It wasn't very good. Now if I make it true that it's required, see that's going to mess up your math, but if you make it true, you run this command, let's clear this out, what's your first number you want to supply, we're going to give it a 1, I'm going to give it a 2, I got math, if I run this again, and I do 1, and I press A, cannot recognize A as a system 132 due to format error, I'm now telling it, nope, you're going to give me a number. And so I'm going to now put two in and we're good to go. Another reason to typecast. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, my last little thing I want to cover with uh, functions, you can pass them in, use them all sorts of different ways. It's not, um, you can use them later on. It's, so the concept behind a function, is you want to reuse the codes, you'll often want to pass that information back out. So I'm going to just show this in, in an example. I've got a function create a warning message. I'm going to make a variable called my error, and I'm going to write this as a warning message, and then I'm going to write that to this. And so this, by doing it this route, I can call it later. And you, so I've got create warning message. It's going to go in. It's going to make a warning message, and that my error is going to get passed down this pipe. And write warning is a command that allows you to change it'll change the format this will come across yellow it'll have some different formatting um and it's a it's a command that write warning to, that you can use um but it will be, you can pass this variable into the pipe and down the line create message here we can use the return command and send back the string so create message it'll go in it'll run this and it'll say hey return my return message so that'll write to string right to the screen function create message two I can also just use write output and write stuff to the screen. So we'll watch all three of those in action. If I run this command, first thing we get, warning. This is my warning message. The reason it came across a warning is we pass it into this little commandlet that says write warning. And it's it's a nice little function of in of itself that puts a warning on there, turns it yellow, um, et cetera. Then we get the create message, which writes my return message, and the last one, my write output message, and there it is, the screen. So there are three different ways that you can return values back from a function using variables here, pass it in, use the return command, or write output. And again, you can pass variables. This was a string, but you could pass, you could do like return and write my error in there if you wanted to, if that was part of the syntax. Anyway, lots of different options. Uh, functions, they repeat the code. If you're going to do something over and over again, put in a function. You can return the values back. Um, it's a powerful feature. I recommend, if you're going to start automating with PowerShell, functions are the way to go. Uh, I hope this helps you as you start to use PowerShell at home and in your uh, at work. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. I'd love it if you subscribe to the channel. I continue to plan on putting out videos as they relate to log analysis and uh, security automation and things like that. Uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll get uh, the latest videos as they come out. And I hope to see you. I hope you'll watch more of my videos.